vascular tissue tumors. So first, we will be discussing all the benign vascular tissue tumors. I'm sorry, not all. Some of the benign vascular tissue tumors. First stop is hemangioma. Hemangioma has a female predilection. It has a rapid growth and it can present itself as a flat or raise on the mucosa. It has a bright red to bluish red color, firm to rubbery, and shows spontaneous involution. And it also blanches when compressed. Okay, so let's go back to the clinical features. No, um, there are two. There, there are two types of hemangioma. Actually, we have rich and the niche. The rich is the rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma, and the niche is the non-involuting congenital hemangioma. Rap the rich, the rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma actually involutes as we age, as the patient age. So, habang tumatanda yung pasyente, uh, yung hemangioma niya, somehow lumiliit din ang lumiliit hanggang sa mawala siya. However, for the, uh, for the other type, which is the niche, the non-involuting congenital hemangioma, it grows together with the, I mean, grows um, simultaneous as we age. So, habang lumalaki yung bata, ganun din yung size niya, lumalaki din. Okay? So, malalaman natin na himangyoma siya kapag nag-blanch siya pag inapplyan ng pressure. So, blanching, ibig sabihin, um, na nagdi-distribute yung blood dun sa loob ng vessel. Kaya, pag prenes, nilagyan ng pressure, parang namumuto yung paligid. Okay? Pero kung hindi mag-iba yung kulay, then it's not hemangioma. However, if mag-iba yung, mag yung kulay, then we can tell that it's hemangioma. hemangioma. Okay? So this is how hemangioma looks like. It can occur in different sites in the oral cavity. Kasi nga, lahat naman nga ng surfaces except the teeth ay may mga blood vessels underneath. Okay, so for buccal mucosa, ito siya, for the tongue, ito siya, sa floor of the mouth, ito din siya. And this one is sa dorsal ng tongue. So meron talaga din siya. Okay, so magtaka kayo pag nagkaroon sa ngipin. Siguro palpolip, pwede pa, pero hey, mangyama, it's another thing. Okay, so how do we differentiate congenital hemangioma from vascular malformation? So isa-isayin natin. Um, with, sa hemangioma, there is increase in number. Again, sa hemangioma, increase in number okay, of vessels. So tatandaan nyo, Ito yung, ito yung keyword, ito yung shortcut dyan, no? Sa congenital, yung third letter, letter N. Kaya, there is an increase in number of blood vessels. Sa vascular naman, vascular malformation, there is an increased size of blood vessels. Of vessels. So, para matandaan natin, size, kasi yung third letter ng vascular is letter S. So, it's increase in size of vessels. Okay. Next, for, for CH, or congenital hemangioma, it appears weeks after birth. Okay. So, wala siya pagkapanganak ng isang patient. Okay. However, for vascular malformation, present na siya nung pinanganak pa lang yung pasyente. Nandun na. Pagka-deliver sa kanya, pagkapanganak sa kanya, nandun na yung vascular malformation. For CH, there is a rapid growth. Biglang paglaki. For vascular malformation, progressive enlargement. Sabi ko nga kanina, as the patient age, ganun din yung vascular malformation. Sumasabay siya sa paglaki. Okay? For CH, it can undergo spontaneous involution. 
So, pwede siyang mawala. For, pero for vascular malformation, persistent. Ha? Consistent siya na nandun lang siya. Hindi ka niya iiwan. Hindi okay. siya mga iiwan. Okay. For CH naman, it rarely affects bone. For BM, it frequently affects bone. Malalaman nyo kung bakit. Mamaya, no? For CH, it can be resectable. Okay. Kasi I think it's because there is increase in number of vessels, not size. Pero sa VM, it's difficult to resect kasi nga may bleeding problem tayo. For CH, controlled natin yung bleeding. Okay. And then, offenses uh, circumscribed yung hemangioma. Pero, pero for vascular malformation, poorly circumscribed. Between the two, mas mararamdaman nyo yung bruit or thrill or yung pagtibok-tibok dito sa VM, sa vascular malformation. Dito nyo mararamdaman yung bruit or thrill na hindi natin makikita sa congenital hemangioma. So that is how we differentiate congenital hemangioma with vascular malformation. This radiographic feature is, feature is actually for vascular malformation. Kasi sabi nga natin kanina, for congenital, congenital hemangioma, it rarely affects bone. However, for vascular malformation, it frequently affects bone. So ito siya. Ayan. So it depends... It depends. Yung magiging um, appearance niya, depends. Pwedeng mag-honeycomb, pwedeng soap, soap bubble. Depende. Honeycomb pag maliliit lang yung locules. Soap, ba soap bubbles kapag malalaki yung locules. Pero, pero, may mga vascular, intrabony vascular, in, in vascular in malformation that shows sunburst appearance. Ano nga ba yung may sunburst appearance ulit sa bone tumors? Yun ay yung osteosarcoma. Okay? So kapag may sunburst appearance, pwede din dalawa yung maisip natin. Okay? Given lang, kapag given yung radiographic, um, radiographic features, pag yun lang, pwede maisip natin, ah, this can be osteosarcoma or mm, this can be an intrabony vascular malformation. So need talaga to correlate pa din with the clinical and history ng patient para malaman natin which is which. Okay. Histopathologically, we can see this one in hemangioma. Okay. So kung mapapansin nyo, halos same lang din siya nung isang soft tissue tumor which is the pyogenic granuloma. Diba? Difference ng talaga nila is mas madami itong hemangioma. Okay, tapos, ayan, makikita nyo. Yung lining niya, hindi naman din ganun kanipes, katulog sa pyogenic granuloma. Yung lining ng mga vessels. So again, these are the vessels. Ito yung mga red blood cells, erythrocytes. Ayan. So ito, ito yung mga lining ng vessels. So hindi siya ganun kanipes, like ano. Pero actually, pyogenic granuloma is um, considered as hemangioma, papillary hemangioma siya. Pero, well, yun na yung, ano, yun yung medyo, ano, may pagkabig tayo doon. Para, para hindi kayo maguluhan, hi ihiwalay natin yung pyogenic granuloma with hemangioma. Okay? So, for hemangioma, ito yung makikita natin, mga vessels, and then sa, sa gitna, we can see the red blood cells. So, the treatment for hemangioma is none. Kasi kailangan lang natin, we only need a watchful neglect. Meaning, kailangan lang natin maging observant. Hayaan nyo lang siya nandyan, pero i-observe nyo pa rin siya. Okay? Hindi naman sa papabayaan nyo na siya. Okay? For others, na significant yung size ng hemangioma, they can undergo surgery, radiation, or sclerosing agents. Okay. Yeah. Next, we have hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. telangiectasia. Commonly, also known as Osler-Weberendu syndrome. Okay. So this one shows 
numerous red papules around 1 to 2 mm. And also, kapag in-apply natin ng pressure, it also blanches. Yan. Nag-iiba din yung kulay niya, nagiging pale. Sabihin, nadidistribute yung blood to the surrounding tissues or dun sa surrounding vessels. Dun sa mismong vessels. Kaya nagpa-blanch. This common is seen on the lip vermilion, the tongue, and the back of mucosa. And this increase in number and size with gene. Okay. So, if um, kung matatanong nyo, ang ibig sabihin ng telangiectasia is yung parang mga spider webs sa mga skin. Kasi sobrang nasa surface, nasa surface na yung blood vessels. Kaya nagmukhang may ay may gumagapang na spider web tsura dito ng mga blood vessels sa skin. So, parang um, siguro sa mga mapupute, mas pansin siya. Yeah. So, it's also known as Osler Weberandu syndrome. Okay. So, for us to diagnose a patient or to give a diagnosis sa patient ng hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, we have to fulfill three of the following four criteria. Unang-una, there is recurrent spontaneous epitaxis. So, madalas siyang magkaroon ng nosebleed. Hindi dahil mahirap siyang umitindi ng English, pero dahil manipis yung lining or yung blood vessels dun sa loob ng nose niya, sa nasal cavity niya, is so, sobrang nasa superficial, sobrang malapit sa surface, na konting irritate Ma konting ma-irritate lang or konting ma-trauma lang can burst and can cause epitaxis or nosebleed. Okay? Next, telangiectasias of the mucosa and skin. Ito yung sinasabi kong spider web dito sa, uh, sa surface ng sa skin. Kasi so, sobrang mababaw or sobrang nasa ibabaw yung mga vessels. And the next, we have the arteriovenous malformation which involves the lungs, the livers, and CNS. Hindi na ako mag-further into details pa ng arteriovenous malformation. Okay? But because this is in the anatomy na. And lastly, there is a family, family, is a, there is a family history of HDD. Okay? So, meron, meron members sa family niya na meron din hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. So, tatlo lang dito sa apat na criteria na ito, mag-positive sa patient, pwede na natin siyang bigyan ng diagnosis ng HHT. There. So, ito yung clinical features sa oral cavity. This is the systemic uh, manifestations of HHT in the oral cavity. So, numerous papules around 1 to 2 mm sa, sa tongue. So, kapag uh, if you apply pressure on those papules, they can um, mag-iba yung kulay nila. Mag-blanch. Ganun din sa um, bakal mucosa. So, may mga papules din. Yan. Histologically, makikita nyo, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, napaka-superficial yung, yung location ng mga vessels. Sobrang superficial. Compare nyo sa hemangdioma, yung hemangdioma kanina, banda dito. Pati nga yung pyogranuloma, banda dito, di ba? Pero, sa HHT, medyo superficial. Yeah, may, mga, may mga superficial tayo. Okay? So, the treatment for this one, kapag mild, no treatment. Pero kapag moderate na siya, selective, um, selective cryosurgery or electrocautery or laser ablation. Kapag sobrang severe na siya, pwede undergo ng surgery. Okay? So, meron tayong um, careful lang dito kasi meron tayong um, some researchers or some authors, some pathologists, or um, operators would um, recommend to do a prophylactic antibiotics before dental procedures kasi afraid sila that it might cause bacteremia kasi iba nga going back sa criteria. Meron tayong arteriovenous malformation. And if we have this arteriovenous, if the patient has this arteriovenous malformation, um, the abscess caused by the bacteremia can go to the brain. Okay, naka ma o oh, babay pas niya yung blood brain bar barrier. Ah oh, well, parang ganun na. Okay? Hindi ko na in detail para hindi na tayo mag-discuss ng further pa na malalim. Okay? So yun yun lang. So careful lang. Okay? So if naman na 
rule out ninyo na meron siyang arteriovenous malformation, you can opt not to give prophylactic antibiotics na lang yan. Okay? But this one, hati pa din yung opinion ng mga researchers. Okay? Hindi pa ganun ka-definite itong recommendation na ito. Okay? And the next, the third vascular tissue tumor on this lecture is the encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis, a.k.a. the Sturge-Weber syndrome. Sabi nila, it's amartomatous vascular proliferation involving tissue of the brain and the face. What's, what's more striking with this um, lesion is that patient has a dermal capillary vascular formation or simply what we call port wine stains. Okay? And this port wine stains, ito yung meron sa face. Okay? The face. Uh, it affects one or more segments of the, of the trigeminal nerve. Kaya tinawag siyang encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. Trigeminal in trigeminal nerve, okay? And patients with this kind of lesion also has leptomeningeal angiomas, angiomas. And this, and this leptomeningeal meningeal angiomas causes convulsion. Ito na, dito na papasok yung problem natin sa oral cavity. Kasi when a patient takes convul um, medication for convulsions, like anti-seizure, these anti-seizures can cause gingival hyperplasia. So, ito yung problem natin oral, sa oral cavity. Okay? So, this is how a patient with um, encephalotrigeminal um, angiomatosis or sturge Weber syndrome looks like, represents clinically. Okay? Meron siyang port point stains. Okay? Meron, di ba, yung say, parang sa anime, sa avatar. Yung anime na avatar. Or yung cartoons na ano, avatar. Meron ba meron dun character na may port wine stain? So, yun. So, minsan, hindi lang dito, ex, hindi lang extraoral nakikita yung port wine stains. Nakikita din yun, intraoral. Hindi. Hindi siya. Okay? So, that is the port wine stains or the dermal capillary vascular formation. These pathologic features include excessive numbers of dilated Dilated blood vessels in the middle and deep dermis. So, madaming daming, sobrang daming blood vessels na, na, na dilated ang makikita ninyo. Okay. The treatment for um, storage fever syndrome is kapag meron siyang facial port wine nevi, pwedeng mag-undergo ng flash lump pulse dilasers. For patients with epilepsy and intellectual disability, yun na pala. Kasi um, yung ibang patient with um, encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis can present intellectual disability. Okay? Kasi naapektuhan dahil dun sa leptomeningeal angioma angiomas. Okay? So, if the patient presents with epilepsy and intellectual disability, um, extensive neurosurgical treatment can be um, suggested like lobectomy and hemi hemispherectomy. Okay? We can also opt to use laser for removal of, of hyperplastic oral lesions like yung mga gingival hyperplasia. Okay. Dahil nga dun sa treatment na ang seizure. Okay. So that is a um, encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. The fourth lesion for vascular tissue tumors is the lymphangioma. Again, lymphangioma. Okay. Let me clarify on this one. Okay? Kasi may naririnig po ako. Meron po ako nababasa. I have um, read sa internet, sa mga social, on social medias, that lymphangioma is a tumor of the lymph, lymph nodes. Um, sa, pero let me clarify on that one kasi lymphangioma is not Two more of the lymph nodes. It's not. It's not a malignancy of the lymph nodes. Iba po yun. Okay. Yeah, let. Kasi ang pag sinabing lymphangioma, it's a tumor on the lymphatic vessels. Okay. Hindi po sa lymph nodes. Kundi sa lymphatic vessels. Magkaiba po yun. Ibang topic po yung sa lymph nodes. Okay. Pupunta din po tayo doon. 
Okay? So, limb pangioma, clinical features niya, may occur at various sites in the oral cavity. Katulad ng mga uh, ibang vascular tissues. Kasi nga, meron um, ka, uh, kasabay or together with the vascular vessels, nandun din yung lymphatic vessels. So, it's most frequent on the anterior two-thirds ng tongue. Yan. And may often results in macroglossia. Ka, minsan, sa tang kapag nag siya sa tang aside from macro, macroglossia, it, it can also demonstrate a pebbly surface. Na mukhang frog's eggs or tapioca pudding. Tapioca pudding. Okay? So, parang mga sago. Sago-sago sila sa dila. Okay? If nagkaroon ng hemorrhage within, it can um, change its color to purple. Deeper, deep, um, if medyo mas malalim pa, if deeper pa yung, yung location ng tumors, magiging soft lang siya or with ill-defined masses yung itsura niya. Okay? However, for al alveolar lymphangiomas, it can dissolve spontaneously. Again, alveolar lymphangiomas will resolve sp spontaneously. Okay. So this is how um, a lymphangioma looks like. This one is extra oral. Yeah. This one is the tongue. So makikita nyo, frog eggs appearance. So mukha nga naman siyang egg ng frogs and mukha siyang tapioca pearls. Tapioca pudding. Yan, para sa mga, alam mo yung sagugulaman. Ganun. So sagugulaman. Di parang yan. May dikit-dikit na sago. Okay, so pathologic features will show us the mild dilation or microcystic with or microscopic cyst-like structure or microcystics. It also has diffusely infiltrated adjacent soft tissues. Okay. So it can also demonstrate lymph node aggregates in their walls. The endothelium lining is typically thin. Okay, kasi yung lining ng lymphatic vessels is very thin talaga. Okay, and the... Uh, Spaces or the microcysts uh, dun sa lesion contains proteinaceous fluid and lymphocytes. Okay? Sabi ko nga sa inyo, it's lymphatic vessels. So, ito siya. There. So, ito mga spaces na to, it's more of a lymphatic vessels. Hindi lang natin masyado makikita yung lining kasi very thin yung siya. Like for this one, pag on a higher magnification, Sobrang thin ng lining. Ayan, no? Sobrang thin. Parang one layer or kalahati nga lang ata ng layer. And then within this um, microcystic um, spaces, makikita natin yung proteinaceous fluid na may mga lymphocytes. Ayan. Ito yung mga laman. Okay? So those are lymphatic vessels. Okay? So treatment for lymphangioma ay kapag maliit, Observation lang. Kasi nga, di ba, sabi natin kanina, it can spontaneously um, can spontaneously resolve. Okay? However, when required, it can be, it can undergo surgical excision or percutaneous sclerotherapy. Total removal may be impossible in all cases. Kasi yung size of presence, depende sa size of presence nito sa vital organs. Okay? However, because nga, impossible na matanggal nga lahat, yung lesion, yung buong lesion, there is a recurrence, which is very, very common. Okay? So again, lymphangioma is not a tumor of the lymph nodes. It's not a malignancy of the lymph nodes. Okay? So yung pangkasabi po na uh, malignancy po siya ng lymph nodes, hindi po. Kasi lymphangioma, is a tumor of the lymphatic vessels. Okay po. Lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels. Okay. So that is the last of the... That is the last of the... Um, benign vascular tissue tumors. The next will be the malignant vascular tumors. So, meron tayong unang-una is Kaposi sarcoma. Okay. So, Kaposi sarcoma is um, actually, yung Kaposi sarcoma na to is pinangalan kay Moritz Kaposi. 
kasi no 1872 dun siya yung unang kapag describe nito okay and sobrang rare ng kapo si sarcoma before the advent of AIDS kaso nga lang no nagkar nung, 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 nung nagkaroon ng laganap nung lumaganap ang AIDS mga around 1980s naging common na din yung kapo si sarcoma kasi yung mga patient with HIV or AIDS madali silang um madali silang magkaroon ng kapo si sarcoma okay so yun so we have four clinical presentations of kapo si sarcoma um we have the classic the endemic the heterogenic and epidemic the classic ito yung chronic common na to sa mga italian jewish and slavic ancestry okay for endemic kaya tinawag siya endemic or african kapo si sarcoma kasi common ito sa mga nasa um sub-saharan desert sa mga nasa sub-sahara desert area sa mga young at saka teenager population nila endemic ito sa kanila and then we have the iatrogenic or the um, transplant associated commonly affected mga organs like kidneys mga ganun dito sa iatrogenic kapo si sarcoma and then lastly we have the epidemic Epidemic kasi nga, it's AIDS-related. Sabi ko kang kanina, tumaas yung cases ng Kaposi sarcoma nung tumaas din yung cases ng AIDS dito sa Earth, sa mundo. Okay. So this is how Kaposi sarcoma looks like clinically. Okay, yan. So it can present like a small one, medium, or sobrang tindi na, sobrang lala na. Okay. Histopathologically, it will look like this one. Okay. So, ang daming nangyayari, histopathologically, no? So, hindi na ako mag-dwell more into that. Okay. Kasi hindi naman din kayo masyado magbabasa ng histopathological readings. Okay. The treatment for Kaposi sarcoma will include radiation therapy, but of course, with cautions. With caution. Kasi nga, um, pag nasobrahan ng radiation, radiation therapy, it can result to severe mucositis and we don't want that. Ang hirap po mag-manage ng mucositis due to radiation therapy. It's very difficult. Okay. Promise. Okay. Na-experience uh, na ko na yan. Promise. Ang hirap po. And then, we can also have surgical excision, systemic chemotherapy, intralesional injection of, of vein blasting to control individual lesions, and mean survival time and the mean survival time of Kaposi sarcoma or patients with Kaposi sarcoma is around 10 to 15 years in survival time. Okay? So, swerte kapag nalagpasan nila yung 15 years survival time. Okay? And then next, malignant vascular tissue tumor is the E-wing sarcoma. Okay? So, yun. Siguro, dahil to kay E-wings, si Mr. E-wings, kaya naging E-wing sarcoma din. So, this is a malignancy of the undifferentiated round cells. So, it's more of the round cells yung problem dito sa yung sarcoma. This is the... Okay. So, medyo naligaw ata to, no? It's more of naging malignant bone. Kasi, nangyari dito is nagkaroon siya ng um, naapektuhan niya. Intraboni kasi siya. Kaya ganun. Okay. So, adolescent, male predominance, can involve long bones, pelvis, and ribs, rare in craniofacial bones. Rare, pero may mga cases na. Minsan nga, napagkakamalaan na, napagkakamalaan na periapical abscess, which is very, very wrong. Okay? Kasi magkaiba po ang treatment ng immune sarcoma with um, periapical abscess, sa mga, lalo na sa mga bata. Okay? So, it's the primary intracellation are very rare. Okay, so, kadalasan, ang nangyayari muna is, nagsisimula muna siya, intraboni, then spread outside. Bihira po mangyari na from outside siya to inside. Okay, so, pinakamadalas, um, the most common clinical findings would be the pain and swelling. And then, some patient would also have a fever, leukocytosis, and elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. This, of course, in advanced cases. And sabi ko nga sa inyo, as I mentioned earlier, it, it started intraboni 
and penetrates the cortex, resulting in a soft tissue mass. Lalabas siya. It's more common in the mandible than in the maxilla. And, of course, it can cause paresthesia and tooth mobility. This is how Ewing sarcoma looks like. Okay? Yan. So, ito sa dila. Ito sa alveolar process. Yan. So, meron ka, may nakita kong case kung saan meron sa may posterior area. Bata. Bata ito. Meron ba siya mga deciduous teeth? Kaso, yun nga. Um, una, periapical abscess daw. So, binigyan siya naman yung antibiotics. Hindi naman umepekto. Then, later on, Ewing sarcoma pala. Okay. So, I'm sad. Kasi kung, yan. Histopathologically, it shows broad sheets of small monotonous round cells with well delineated nuclear outlines and ill-defined cellular borders. Variable sizes nests of tumor cells separated by fibroblast sept vascular septa, creating a lobular pattern. And it has an extensive necrosis and hemorrhage, which are common. Heta siya. So, obvious naman, no? Na it's a malignancy of a round cells, of the round cells. Kaya nyo, Puro round cells. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. The treatment for Ewing sarcoma is a multi-drug chemotherapy with surgery and or radiotherapy. So, ibang-iba po siya sa treatment ng periapical abscess. Okay. And the most common site of metastasis, yes, there is a metastasis which can be in the lungs and in the bones. Yon. So I think this is the last slide for um, vascular tissue tumors. Um, and I think san, um, ngayon, sana na alam nyo na kung how to differentiate hemangioma from vascular malformation and how to um, and sana naging familiar kayo, na familiarize kayo with, with HHT and um, Sturge-Weber syndrome and also with Kaposi's and Ewing sarcoma. Okay, so yeah. And I think this is the last nga. So thank you. And stop now.